Thank you, Liz and Sue, for keying us up for today's event. You were both inspirational and you are so inspirational to many as leaders in this industry. And again, congratulations, Sue, on your new role. We're all so very excited for you. Liz and Sue will be coming back to lead conversations about representation, mattering, and market updates. But first, we're going to tackle tips to leverage social media and video in your business. But it feels like it's evolving at a breakneck speed. So to help us navigate what this means, uh, for real estate agents, we have tapped one of Coldwell Banker's brightest stars from the DC market to share some of her best practices and tips for mastering social media and video for real estate business. Before I formally introduce her, I need to take a moment to recognize what a force in our industry is. Just a few of the many things you need to know about her. She's highly recognized and sought after residential commercial realtor and consistently ranks in the top 100 among agents within the Coldwell Banker 30 Mid-Atlantic Region offices. And finally, in 2019, Erica was appointed by Mayor Muriel Bowser to the District of Columbia Real Estate Commission. I'd like to formally introduce all of you to the incredible Miss Erica S. Black. Erica, thank you for being here. So yeah. Thank you so much, Lindsay. I appreciate the introduction. Thanks, uh, ladies, for having me on. I'm, I'm enjoying it so far. <laughs> Awesome. Well, Erica, I talked a little bit about you. Do you mind telling the audience a little bit more about yourself? Uh, yeah. So um, I always like Sharon. I am originally from Rich Square, North Carolina. It's a two-stoplight town, and um, it's, it's it's really tiny. So to be here in the city is just such an amazing um, experience. And um, yeah, I just enjoy. I love what I do. Um, this year, I was. Um, also in the president, presidential social circle. So that was exciting. So my business is really booming and growing and um, I'm just happy to be here. So thanks for the opportunity. Well, we are happy to have you here as well. And I've enjoyed all of our conversations leading up to today. So let's jump right in. We all know there are what feels like a million social media platforms and it's sometimes hard to figure sometimes out. Sometimes hard to jump into. How do you decide where to spend your time? Well, I'm actually on all of the platforms. Um, that's TikTok, that's, you know, that's Instagram, that's Facebook, Twitter, you, you name it, I'm on there. So I recommend to the ladies, you know, even if you're not going to be fully active, just make sure you do the basics, like set up the account, put your picture there so that people will know that you exist, right? So that's really, really important. But my favorite is Instagram. I really enjoy all of the pictures. I enjoy doing the stories, um, also the video. So I, I just love Instagram because it's, it's so user friendly. I love that. Well, speaking about breaking through, I congratulate you for jumping into TikTok. I think it's one of the places that a lot of people are curious about. So way to jump in. That's awesome. But let's focus on your favorite, which is also one of my favorites as well, Instagram. Um, you were sharing a little bit about your content strategy, and I, I thought it was really interesting. So um, a lot of people wonder, should I use stories? Should I use posts? Should I use both? So can you share with your audience? I love your rationale behind your strategy of how you tackle it. Oh, yeah. So I enjoy doing both. So typically I'll use, so if I do a post, I'll also do it in a story, but I'll just like recently I've been putting this superwoman thing and I'll have like the sparkles and I just enjoy adding like the music and just all the different graphics that you can add in the highlights um, and the stories. Um, so what I, what I would say, you know, for anyone that's interested in just growing their content, of course, our company, if you're with CB, we have plenty of free content that is put out there all the time for us. So I en enjoy using that. Um, but when it comes to creating anything on my own, I enjoy using Canva. So I'll create something in Canva, I'll post it. Um, and so it just makes it, keeps it really fun and keeps it interesting. And I like being really organic when it comes to posting. Um, so for example, um, I, if anyone wants to follow me, my name is, of course, Erica S. Black, and you can follow me on Instagram. Um, so, right, my husband decided he wanted to be sweet. <laughs> so he bought me these flowers that are right here. Behind. I meant to comment, they're beautiful. <laughs> Thank you. So that's, that's been genuine. That's been organic. Because I know a lot of Asians is just, Hey, house here, house, 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 house. Okay, yes, we sell houses, 
but the world also wants to know more about you. You know, what right. type of person are you? What type of things do you like? Okay, do you have a dog? Um, Sue says she's running all these vows. I also enjoy running. Um, so I post, you know, I post like my different um, hiking trails and, and just all of those things, just keep it, keep things interesting and keep people intrigued about you so that they'll be wanting to use you, you know? Like you Absolutely. don't just sell real estate, there's more to you as an individual. <laughs> So you said a lot of great things there. I want to recap a few things. Canva, also a huge fan of Canva. It's an awesome tool. Um, combining Canva and for us at Coldwell Banker, BrandServe is like the greatest knockout punch for content. So love you using Canva. Um, and I also think absolutely you shouldn't be all real estate all the time, right? It's really important to showcase your whole personality. Um, and just also the thing that I loved about your strategy was really taking advantage of repurposing content. So introducing it in stories, but then following it up later because we know it's gone in 24 hours. So I am definitely someone that's always scrolling at the top through stories. I don't normally get through posts. So you're hitting your audience on both sides. So I think that's really, really smart. So the theme of today, is obviously breaking through barriers. Uh, as women, a lot of us are a little bit hesitant sometimes to get on camera. So I don't know what it was like for you with your journey, but was getting on camera, hearing your voice, seeing yourself, was that a barrier you had a breakthrough? Was it an automatic, I'm really comfortable with this? How did you tackle that? Yeah, so initially I just did the voiceovers, you know, do the, the film and just add your voice behind it if you're shy. But another thing um, that I do, I just record my clients. So for example, I sent you some interesting footage that I've shared um, during COVID. So one of my clients, it was just, you know, he was happy. He was excited about closing day and he locked his keys in the car. Yes, that's embarrassing, but it's also funny. It's just the lightheartedness of real, real estate. So we have these bloopers. We have all these things that happen behind the scenes that we never share. So those are the type of things that I share. So I, I shared him like trying to get his keys out the car. Um, <laughs> I had a fishing rod in the back of my car. So my initial post was just him getting it out. But then when I put it in the highlights, I put like, you know, hashtag girls fish too. And I gave him my fishing rod. So it was really cute. So it's just keeping it fun, keeping it interesting, just sharing different aspects of things. <laughs> I, I have to tell you, I watched that video a few times after you sent it. I think it's awesome. It was fun. It shows that you certainly go above and, you know, above and beyond for your clients. You're very resourceful uh, coming up with your fish, fishing line in the back. I thought that was great. Uh, <laughs> also, I love about your content strategy too. Not only is it just really authentic to who you are, but you do a lot to keep top of mind awareness with people. So I think sometimes agents are so focused on the transaction, but I'm noticing a lot of your content not only focuses on before the sale, but remembering to stay top of mind after the sale, not only because we know people are, you know, moving every seven to 10 years, definitely more in your DC market. Um, but can you talk a little bit about that? How do you find your inspiration for content to make sure you're top of mind when it's time to move, but also for referrals? Yeah, so another thing that I do is when I'm out with my home inspector, I'm also a real estate investor. So I enjoy, one of my favorite parts of the process is the home inspection. So with the home inspection, I'll have my yeah. different, I'll have my different um, inspectors to just go through and give me 30 seconds to a minute, like a tip of the day, like what do you recommend? So you know, it'll be something, you know, sometimes it's just small things. Most people don't realize when it comes to your, the termite inspection, you know, you might have gotten one when you purchased the home, but those things only last like 30, 45 days. I don't know. Most people don't realize that. So it is one thing, that, one thing that you should continually do. You should continually get your home inspected for termites. So I, I just didn't know that. <laughs> Yeah, it only that report is only 30 days. <laughs> that's that's it. so great. That's that's awesome. And it's a really good way to connect with your your past clients and obviously future as well. Um yeah. I've your videos, some of them obviously you're on your phone. I'm curious about what your equipment setup's like. So I know um there are plenty of things you can add on, like microphones and ring lights. Um so what does your equipment setup look like? Yeah, so right now I'm using this ring light. I really enjoy it. Um it just you know, enhances the room. It just brightens things up. Um, I also use it outside of social media. It's a tool that you can use when you're just 
you know, meeting with a client, you know, right now with COVID, we're having a lot of virtual meetings. So you want to show up and look your best. So it just enhances the conversation and just like let people really see you and it's, you know, not dark. So I have this ring. In addition on my, um, my laptop, I bought a webcam because the camera on my laptop is, is fine, but these uh, webcams are HD, 4K, and it's <laughs> they have so very many. fancy. Yeah, just, you know, they're just as advanced as our TV. So I also purchased one of those. I, ha I have a selfie stick, but at the end of the day, Lindsay, guess what? Everything that you need for social media is on your cell phone. These cell phones are a thousand dollars or more. And I noticed that the new, I, I'm, a, I'm an Android person. I have my Samsung now. But they have a new Samsung that just came out $2,500. Oh my goodness. I agree. I just got the new iPhone 12 and I have to say my first selfie, I probably didn't realize how many wrinkles that I have in my forehead, but thank you to my phone for pointing that out because the quality is exceptional. Um, so yes, I agree. We have, we have amazing technology in our pocket and I don't think that that, um, there's a huge need to add on. Um, so I know that we're coming up on time. We have about 30 seconds left. Any last advice for people looking to break through in video? Yeah, if you're looking to break through, I should say be who you are. I mean, it doesn't have to be to the point where you're posting every day, every second. Just just go live when you feel like it and you're in the moment. Just just be who you are. Be organic. You know, if you're on that home inspection, take a couple of seconds and take it all in and share that with your crowd. Or if you're at a spectacular home, go ahead and showcase that. It's just, just, just do it. I would say just do it. Start where you find yourself and just do it. That's what I would say. I love that advice. I think um, we sometimes hear consistency is key, but sometimes we hear it's crippling, right? And having to post a video every Wednesday or Friday, it could feel daunting, but I love your go with the flow. Your energy is contagious. Again, thank you for representing Cobalt Banker and us so well. I'm so appreciative of Leah Wright putting us in touch because I have a new industry best friend and I'm just so happy to stay in touch with you now. So thank you for your time today. I learned a lot. I know our audience did as well, and I can't wait to talk to you again soon. All right, talk to you soon. Thanks. Thanks, Erica. All right, next up, we're going to welcome back Liz Geringer to chat with Tina Marie Hernandez about a very important topic, why representation matters in real estate. Thanks, Lindsay. Wow. Erica, oh my gosh, be who you are. So simple, but so sage. I absolutely love it. You definitely do that. Your authenticity is really inspiring. Um, I'm excited to get acquainted with you here today. Uh, and Tina Marie, I'm happy to welcome her to our chat today. She is awesome. She is a new member of our Cobble Banker family, but not new at all to real estate. Very successful. There she is. Very successful. Very fabulous. 25 years in real estate. Um, and she is the owner of Cobble Banker Omni Group in Southern California. Hi. Hi. It's good to see you. It's great to see you. Thank you so much for having me. Oh my gosh. We always welcome you to our studies <laughs> and conversations. It's great to see you. I want to talk a little bit about you before we dive into, uh, we want to talk about diversity and inclusion a little bit, but I um, had such a great conversation with you over the weekend and I've enjoyed getting to know you over time. And mm -hmm. you are just, you're so full of life and you're so full of energy. And you know, you, you're at this incredible point of success in your life. You have this really successful business, but I feel like you're just getting going. Like you don't seem at all like you're at the pinnacle of your career. You feel like you're like early chapters in. I mean, do you feel that way? Do you feel like you just have so much ahead of you? I do. I think that, you know, this is a new chapter, you know, being Cobalt Banker, um, it, it's, we kind of tore away some layers and, and yes, we're kind of starting all over, but that's okay. I'm excited about it. It's a new treaded waters for me in, in the role that I'm at. Um, so uh, being able to switch that hat is, is, is pretty fun. So it makes it exciting. Yeah, well, you are exciting, but you um, you don't really limit yourself. What I one of the things I learned about you over the weekend, I was saying I think of you as such a people person. You know, you have a lot of charisma, you have a lot of success in your company, and you attract people to your company. That's who you are. So you're obviously a people person, like 
many people in this business. It's so important, but you're also kind of an idea guy. I realized in talking with you over the weekend, you're a total idea guy and um, you, you do other things. Like you, you explained to me that real estate for you is it's a path to do what you love. So I wanted to talk about that because it really captured right. me. It captured me. So can we talk about that? Yeah. You know, I, I think that um, I do call myself, a, you know, I've got ideas for everything. So, you know, just got to make them fit. And when I talk to people, you know, kind of like what Sue was saying is like, you know, let me see what people are doing and how we can help it. But, you know, real estate isn't for everybody. Everybody doesn't love real estate the way I, I love real estate. Um, and even that changes, you know, I've been in the business for, for 30 years. So I was a lot more enthusiastic about one section of it that I, you know, that, that now I'm in a different segment of it, of, of, you know, Airbnbs and, and uh, investments. And that excites me more than other parts of real estate. But um, more than anything, I like to see what people, you know, when I'm interviewing agents, I get to know them a little bit better. And I'm like, you know, I, I think we were speaking about one of our agents that, you know, she is into fitness and she loves fitness, which is great. Um, so um, at the end of the day, what she wants to do is she wants to own a gym. She wants to you know, be able to, to, to own a gym and have people go in and, and, and do their fitness journey with her. And she's, you know, we're teaching her how to use real estate to be that vehicle for the end, you know, for, for her goal, for her passion, which is, which is the gym. Um, so she doesn't even have to, you know, she doesn't have to rent a spot. We're going to show her how to get to real estate, own the, own the building and get her passion in there. So yeah, it's um, a real estate's an amazing career for that because it can open you up to do other things. It's not exactly, yes. it doesn't have to be what we see on, on the face of it. And, and yep. in that story there that you're sharing, you've also identified, you told me um, your husband is also, you work with your husband. He's also an owner of your company. And um, he actually, you said, does a lot of the recruiting for you, even though I'm sure you have, many people are interested in joining um, for both because of both of you, but you said he often recruits and then you actually find the strength of the person. You do a little, maybe even social media review, go deep in. And I kind do. Of find the strengths. I love that. Yeah, he was one time we were sitting down talking, and he was talking about the person he was talking to. And I'm one of those people, you know, I'm just curious by nature, I want to know about people, I want to get connected with them. So I, I'm able to do that versus, you know, via, via Facebook and social media now. So, you know, I'm like, Oh, they have this or that. And he's like, Oh, I didn't know that. I'm like, didn't you look at them on social media before you talk to them? And he's like, oh, I forgot to do that. So I sit and find what their interests are. I try to connect with them um, that way and see if there's any common ground um, or, you know, just to, just to be able to connect that way. I, I, I absolutely do use social media in, in, in a lot of different ways. So yeah, I mean, that's one of them. <laughs> it's great. I mean, you're finding strengths. You're sort of open to learning, open to being a student of, of all the people that join your organization, really figuring them out. And you actually described to me, that's a little bit how you view um, diversity, about how you grow yeah. your business and, and look for other perspectives that you really consider yourself. You need to be open and, and absolutely learn as, a, as a student almost. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I can't just think that my way is the only way because I know that there's some, although I think I am all the time, but, but, you know, there's always different other ways and I've got to learn other ways. And, and, you know, we are, you know, in Orange County, California, it is a melting pot for all different kinds of, you know, diversity. Um, so being able to relate to whoever you walk into, you know, walk in and speak with, um, you know, you have to not only, I mean, okay, I don't know the language, but I at least need to know how to communicate effectively to them. Um, and that word effectively is, 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 you know, is open for interpretation because I may be thinking you're hearing me, but, um, you know, I'm not connecting with you on some level. And so to be able to understand that culture diversity as well, um, even if I doesn't make it up in my office right now, I have to, as, you know, as a leader in this community, you know, go and seek and, and learn that. And, and I think you, you raised a point in there. Um, there. This idea of representation is interesting to both of us because you know, representation could just mean having an agent or representation in my legal background can be having a lawyer. Like we're, you know, but right. representation, having a full, um, a full representation of all types of people in your business, inside of your company and in your customer base. You know, we talked about the importance of that. Um, and we, we talked about how it's not just math, you know, it's not just like account, but it's making people feel included. Yeah. Um, I love that sentiment. So can you talk a little bit about that? 
how you yeah i think that you know it's one thing to have a conversation you know with somebody and say oh we're you know we are a diverse company and we you know we we cater to this and cater to that you know and we talk about you know i think the knowledge that i gave you was you know women we support women we do all this for women but there's no women's bathroom, you know, or there's, or there's nothing that makes them feel included. Um, you know, it's one thing to be diverse, but there's inclusion. How are you making them feel a part of, you know, how, how is their, their, their way of thinking or their diverse need or segment being realized? Um, that is really important because you don't, you, you know, it's, it's to say one thing, but to walk the walk and talk the talk is another thing. Yeah, I love how um, in this space and in, in talking about having a colorful company, bringing in people of color and bringing in perspectives, it, the, it's really critical to, to think about belonging and making people feel yeah. like they belong. I, I knew for myself, I, I'm a new grandma, you know, and so, and, and then another one over today, last night, I had a brand new baby. So, um, so you Congrats. know, our family is growing, but even the diverse in that segment, you know, I, my agents know on Mondays and Wednesdays, I'm grandma. And they, it's, it's, it's nice to know that they respect that, you know, that, that they made a space in their life to, to, to be grandma. But I also, with that, with that, I make myself available any day after that and any time after that. So, you know, that is, that is, that's, that's being included, you know, me as a leader as well. I, it's nice to know that my agents do that as well on the reverse. Yeah. Well, we really appreciate everything you're doing. You are a superstar. Can you, have you landed on a word that's inspiring you for 2021? So Sue took all my words, um, but, <laughs> but, you know, I would say, you know, move, you know, um, especially in 2020, we were stagnant. A lot of us, we were in our own head. We didn't move. We didn't think we didn't, you know, we were scared, you know, stopped. Um, so I, you know, I think that I remember that when, you know, I, I take my walks and I see water running and it's just full of life when it's just moving and it's rowing. And, and I think I'm going to be 50 years old this year. And to think that I have the ability to move um, and do something with, with, with the talents and the, you know, the people around me, the, the tools that I have, um, the connections that I make, and it's up to me to move forward um, and take that, take those initiatives, you know, pick up the phone and call people and to do that. So I think, right. I think my word would probably to be to just move. <laughs> I love it. And that's almost poetic. It's really actually a pretty beautiful word. So I may steal that one. Um, so <laughs> thank you so much for your time. I think it's a perfect time to head back to Sue so that she can introduce us to our next guest and give us an update on what to expect in the market this year. But thank you. It's great to see you. Thanks. Sue, back to you. Hey there. So I am here and trying to get my video working. Um, I think uh, the host has stopped it. So somebody has to start my video for me. Um, but I'm here, Liz. Awesome. And I'll, I'll keep smiling, Sue. There you go. Just don't, it's not awkward. Just, you know, we'll just smile away. What did we say? We like people to, to just pull us back when we're going off the rails. So um, great, great conversation. Thank you so much. And I love the, the nugget on, you know, making space comfortable. You know, it, it's all about being, you know, making where we work and, and our offices and our environment safe space for people to be themselves, no matter who they are or what they bring to the table. So I, I love that that um, from Tina Marie. So thank you so much. I am so excited today to introduce our next speaker, um, Leslie Appleton Young. She is the former chief economist for the California Association of Realtors. We're gonna talk to her about the market, last year, this year, what we're seeing. She is also the co-creator of Woman Up, California Association of Realtors um, initiative, which was designed to, to kind of close the gender gap uh, in the leadership of real estate firms. Um, many in our community here at What Moves Her are part of the Woman Up community as well. Um, and I've had a tremendous time getting to know Leslie and the entire team there. Leslie is so passionate about empowering women to see their potential and all of the possibilities, even when they can't see them themselves. So Leslie, are you with us? Can you, I don't see I you. I hope I am. I think I am. <laughs> <You are? laughs> 
It's so great to see you. It's I great to see you together. too, Sue. I know, I do too. I think we all do. It's a, it's a loss, but you know, hopefully later this year, we never know. Yeah, I'm, 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 it's, uh, it's in the long run, a, uh, it, there's some silver linings in there we can talk about as well, right? With family right. And, and friends and connection and stuff in the midst of a, of a, a very, very difficult time for so many. But, you know, Leslie, do you want to just give everyone, I think many know you, um, but for those that don't, a little bit of the background on, on your path in our industry? Sure, I'd be happy to. Hi, everyone. Um, I started working uh, at the California Association of Realtors in uh, 1984. I came back with a uh, a graduate degree uh, in economics from uh, from Penn, and I'd done some work, uh, done a little consulting. I worked at the Federal Reserve Bank of Philadelphia, and I started as a research analyst at CAR, and it essentially turned into um, a 30, almost 37 year uh, career. So I have been involved in strategic planning. I've been involved with our broker, uh, broker outreach. I've given so many speeches um, and everyone's been, um, been a learning experience. And I've, I just feel like I've been around a long time and have such an appreciation as some of the uh, earlier speakers did for this industry where everyone wakes up every morning unemployed and just makes it happen. And it's very, uh, very inspiring. And add to that the benefits of home ownership. And it's just a perfect, uh, a perfect recipe there. It sure is. Well, Leslie, I think you are such an inspiration to so many. And, you know, we talk about, Liz and I talked a little bit about you know, sort of breakthroughs and this whole breakthrough summit, you know, you've been a trailblazer in our industry for women um, and, and really just, you know, even forget the gender gaps, right, just in the industry. And, and I think, you know, I've, I've loved getting to know you. I think um, the audience will certainly enjoy getting to know you. And I, I do want to save some space for the Woman Up conversation and understanding sort of where that, that the, the um, impetus for that was, but, you know, focusing on the market and the industry sure. and the economy, um, you know, have you ever in your 30 plus years seen anything like the market we experienced in 2020? Absolutely never. And certainly the comparisons are back to the Great Recession in 2006, 7, 8, 9. And this was completely different because we went into 2020 and it was a great year in January and February for real estate. And by the middle of March, when everything shut down, real estate shut down. And I think, and I'll include myself, we all kind of overreacted given what happened, right? Because you had you know, the biggest decline in GDP ever uh, in the second quarter and whole swaths of the um, uh, market, the economy were shut down. But then all of a sudden, you know, we got real estate in, in many areas, certainly in California and essential service. And we were able to go forward with this ability to meet the just mushrooming demand that people had for different types of housing. And it was fed by these record historically low, uh, low mortgage rates. So it would have been, I think, impossible to have predicted this as we went into 2020. I've never seen anything like it. And I think as we go into uh, 2021 here from the perspective of January, we are in for another very, very strong year um, in um, existing single family home sales. That's great. And, and I'd love to talk a little bit about that. So for sure, we saw, and, I, and we did, right? The, the spring of 2020 was, you know, March. We all, nobody would have predicted this sort of uh, explosion that we've seen through the balance of the year. And there are certainly some trends, um, and maybe they're more than trends at this point, you know, some, some things that are fueling that from a macro perspective. So let's bring it up to that a little bit. What are you seeing that, that gives you, you know, that feeling of momentum? that's going to continue into 2021 based on some of those macro trends you've seen? Yeah, I mean, I think we're really pretty assured um, a very low rate environment for the next um, year or two. I think Powell has been signaling that to the markets for uh, quite some time. And you have the new uh, Treasury Secretary who is very much focused on 
getting this economy that that came roaring back in segments, right? It was a strong semi recovery because we still have areas that are lagging. So you're going to continue to see this push for more recovery funds, more relief funds, um, and more um, and more stimulus. And I think that is, you know, that means low low rates. And we certainly haven't seen much response um, in terms of inflation. Um, on the other hand, I think you've heard the term the K-shaped uh, K-shaped recovery, and that is, you know, there are people that are doing um, really well, maybe even better than they were before the pandemic, and these are the people that are driving the housing market uh, right now. The, the signs of stress have, have definitely been in the moderate and lower wage, uh, um, lower wage segments um, of the uh, of the economy, people in you know hospitality and restaurants and so on, where there's a very um, high touch um, high touch element. So that dichotomy has really protected um, real estate um, a little bit. I think you also have things like expectations of the stock market. The stock market had an unbelievable year. People betting there's going to be a correction. Let's get into a real asset. Housing looks good. And then this whole work from home thing, which has created, I need two home offices. I can actually um, buy a home in Lake Tahoe or in Idaho or in Utah and keep my job, right? Uh, so people taking advantage of that, needing homes that incorporate multi-generational uh, families, um, children being taught at home. So you you know the song. I mean, it's it's really just been an incredible, perfect storm of support and strength for the real estate market this year. Yeah, it really is incredible to see. And, and um, when you think about the um, societal shifts. You think about people being able to work from home. I mean, I sort of anecdotally laugh. I, I'm in a house eight years. We built it. I had no issue with it, but I wasn't here by and large for 10 years and there are eight years. And now that I'm here, I'm like, oh, this doesn't really work for me anymore. You know, so there's right. sort of that reframing of um, what you want and what you need um, if, if you're in that, that ability to take advantage of the market. And you know, one of the things that, that I'm hearing and I'm seeing a little bit is this, this supply issue, this, this impact um, of supply, demand is still very much there. Um, you know, when you talk inventory, and so, what are your thoughts on that? Is, that? is that a dark spot out there potentially? Is it not? What, what are your thoughts on even loosening up? It's funny, I was, I was looking for, I'm looking for a house. And I won't name my realtor on the phone on, on this call, but she's she's one of ours. Um, you know what? Um, and she said nobody's putting their house on the market because they can't find anywhere to go. And so there's a little bit of that. Any thoughts on that? Just as people are thinking through um, 2021 and business planning and this momentum, what that may be. Well, I think you, in terms of new construction, we're actually doing a little bit. Um, better. We were 7% above 2019 in terms of housing starts in the economy um, in, in 2020. So that not only is great for housing, but it stimulates jobs and all of the wonderful um, multiplier effect. The problem is we're in such a big deficit that it's going to take years of growth like that in order to, um, in order to provide um, that housing. And so what you have, and I really think the most important trend to be aware of right now um, in terms of the macro, macro stuff that you're talking about is really the migration um, issues and how people are moving uh, from, you know, California and New York and they're moving to areas that have um, lower cost housing and a higher uh, quality of life. And maybe the weather isn't quite what they're looking for, but they're willing to make those, um, those trade-offs uh, now. So I think you're, you're seeing this even out, right? And that's how equilibrium works, right? As people make different choices based on, on the market signals um, that they're getting. Um, NAR came out with, um, um, in the last couple of weeks, that the top 10 um, areas in the country that, are, that have done the best um, in, in 2020 and are poised to do even better. And when you look at them, first of all, they're all in different states. And none of them are New York and California. You know, it's Atlanta and Boise and Provo and, and Spokane and Des Moines and Indianapolis. So I think that's really the theme going forward. And so for anyone in Coldwell Banker, you know, you need to really take advantage of this built-in relocation network 
that you have to be aware of what that um, looks like and how to tap into the needs um, of your clients because it's it's going to continue to uh, to grow in my estimation these these movements this re recalibration if you will yeah it's a great point and and the importance for agents to be educated on the migration patterns that are occurring within their own communities right and and to your point um, they're different than they were you know pre pandemic there's there, we're seeing movement in and out of different markets so it's not just New York, New Jersey to Florida. While that's occurring in mass, it's it's happening to other markets as well. Do you have any tips for anyone who's on the call now um, how to sort of get more insight into that or understand their local markets from an economic perspective for their business? Any any tips that sort of we we're running out of time. I could talk to you forever. No, I know. Well, just to go back um, to some of the points that um, Erica was making, I mean, be authentic and be yourself. So if you're kind of a data nerd and you really like this stuff, you ought to be reading the Wall Street Journal like every single day, right? And there's all there's really great stuff in it, but it'll really keep you on top of, of some of the key things. But if it's not your thing, I'm really big into time blocking. A, 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 a little bit of time every week, just Google your, your you know, your city and, and see what's happening. The, the Chamber of Commerce, the Census Bureau, um, the, the MLS, you know, there's always some good data points. And what you want to do is leverage that information uh, in, in social media. You know, you want to be uh, the expert. You want to be um, a leader in knowing uh, what's going on because people value uh, value that information. So there's no excuse to not be informed uh, today. I think you just have to figure out how much of that is really going to be useful for you um, in your in your marketplace and the and the clients that you are dealing with. I love it, Leslie. As always, I could talk to you forever. You are um, just a, a wealth of knowledge. Um, and able to articulate some of the, the, the macroeconomic and big economic things in a way that really um, break down to help individuals in their business and, and things that I think they can utilize going forward to plan for 2021 and beyond, right? Being that, that local right. expert um, and evolving what you need to know in today's business to build that plan and, and be um, important for your, you know, an important resource for your customers. So thank you so much for joining us today. Thank My you. My pleasure. Thanks so for having me. Yeah. And thank you uh, for all of the work uh, with you and the team uh, to advance and empower women in our industry as well. It is it. wonderful. We appreciate you. Thanks for joining us today. Anytime. Thanks. And with that, it is time to turn it back over to Lindsay Lestansky to tap into our audience knowledge. So let's get into our networking session. Thanks, Lindsay. Awesome, Sue, that was amazing. Very much like you, where you could talk to Leslie forever. I could listen to her forever. I mean, she, my heart was singing between hearing the how great the uh, you know industry is doing, where it's going, listening to her, empower women, um, talking about the Wall Street Journal as a, as a PR woman, that made my heart sing. So uh, Leslie, thank you for all that you brought today to amazing. today's event. You are incredible. Sue, you did a great job with her, so thank you. All right, we have hundreds of individuals, I was going to say from the country, but I know we at least have Aileen in from Turkey, so I'm saying from around the world. We have women who are powerful from around the world online with us right now, and we thought it would be a miss if we didn't carve out some time for networking. So we're going to take 15 minutes for a quick lightning round in small groups. You're going to be randomly assigned to a breakout room, and our technical wizards, who we should all be shouting out, who've done amazing already today, thank you guys, will move you into that room. So no need to do anything. One thing, actually, I kind of lied, is you do have to turn on your camera. We want to see your faces, so if your camera is off, please turn it on. Once there, you're going to be met with attendees and a group moderator, and that's your time to share your information, interesting facts from the sessions. If you have a question, I know a lot of people have a lot of um, interest in, like, Clubhouse right now. Everybody's kind of looking for passes to get in, so if that's a question, you could bring that up. Uh, last, we're going to charge each group to come up with one word or phrase that you're going to use this year. We've heard Sue and some others. My word is energized, which may feel silly as a new mom of twins, but I'm thinking if you could dream it, you can do it. So I'm going to put it out there and hope that I feel energized and then I can give that energy to the, my team, my family, those around you. So please think about your word. 
Once the 15 minutes is done, our technical wizards will come back and put you into the main room. And I just want to note, you're not going to want to miss our last speakers. After the breakout session is over, we're going to be pushed back into the main room. And this is where you're going to be joined by team members of the incredible Jill Zeter group, who get this in case you haven't heard, just broke one billion dollars in sales in one year. A billion dollars. Well, that's that's absolutely unbelievable. So you're going to hear from that powerhouse team. But for now, we're going to get into our breakout. So be prepared to share your insight. And most of all, of course, have fun.